Uh, but this is uh, Dateline, Tillamook County, Oregon. And it's in the uh, environmental news, uh, environews.tv is the website. And the headline, it's finally here. Radioactive plume from Fukushima makes landfall on America's west coast. It's dated December 12th, uh, two days ago. Telema County, Oregon, seaborne cesium-134, the so-called fingerprint of Fukushima, has been detected on U.S. shores for the first time, researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution said this month. Woods Hole is a crowdfunded science seawater sampling project that has been monitoring the radioactive plume making its way across the Pacific to America's west coast from the demolished Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Um, the seawater samples were taken from the shores of Tillamook Bay and Gold Beach. Uh, this was in January and February of this year, so this was you know, almost a year ago. Uh, in strikingly similar news reported last month, reporters at the Fukushima Inform Project in Canada, led by University of Victoria chemical oceanographer Jake Cullen, said they found a sockeye salmon sampled from Okanaga Lake in British Columbia that tested positive for cesium-134 as well. Multiple other reports have circulated online, uh, mostly not corroborated by any tangible measurement data that point to possible cases of radioactive contamination of Canadian salmon. But Enviro News Oregon has not independently confirmed any of these claims. Uh, but it's, you know, they've got this picture of a sushi restaurant where the guy is testing the fish for radiation with a Geiger counter. They call uh, cesium-134 the footprint of Fukushima because it has a half-life of 2.6 years. Um, and there's basically no place else it could have originated. You know, airborne, you know, back in 2011 when Fukushima melted down, we had ra radioactive iodine basically circling the globe, airborne, but this is seaborne. And uh, the samples from the Oregon coast measured around three-tenths of a becquerel per cubic meter for cesium-134. Uh, researchers, both the U.S. and Canada, say, oh, nothing to worry about. This is uh, this very low levels. And uh, NBC, the New York Post, USA Today, and even the Inquisitor, among others, took the bait and reported the same thing. Nothing, you know, nothing to worry about. Well, here's how radiation works. Radiation, you know, uh, uh, as... as as atoms decay from one element to another or from one isotope to another, um, as, as, you know, basically protons are being thrown off or, or you know, as, as, the, as, as, the, as the material or, or neutrons, in the case of, you know, an, an isotope, as, as the element is decaying, it is throwing off radiation. And the radiation, if it hits... The DNA in the nucleolus in the nucleus of a cell can alter that DNA in ways that can produce things like cancer. Now, it can also cause simply the cell to die, or it can mutate the cell in all kinds of other weird ways. And so, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a numbers game if you irradiate a million cells, which is not a lot. I mean, it's just a very small area of tissue around a single atom of, say, cesium, for example irradiate a million cells, you might get two or three that become cancerous. That's all it takes, right? You've got cancer. Um, but you also might not cause cancer in any of them, or it could be the very first cell that gets irradiated is the one that, that gets flipped into a cancer. So, you know, to say that there's no such thing, or to say that there is a safe level of radiation is uh, frankly wrong. It's just wrong. It's, uh, you know, there, there is no such thing as a safe level of radiation, period.